Aka, 1909. Nothing could prepare me for my meeting with Abu Baha. The greatness of his spirit, the divinity of his being, deprives one of all one's powers, even the power of sensation for a time. And yet, he makes himself so simple in the greatness of his love and his great God tenderness. He bends so close to us. In that dear little room, wood panels with its white canopy bed, its divan, its simple little dressing table, and on the windowsill, two stone water jars, nothing more. He was seated on the divan when I entered and beckoned me to his side. As I passed him to take my seat, I wanted to kneel before him. My knees almost drew me down, but, well, fearing to be insincere, I would not yield. He took his hand and he placed mine in his. His oh so mysterious hand, so delicately made, so steely strong, currents of life streaming from it. Are you well? Are you happy? He said in English. Oh, my heart dilated as if a bird were spreading wings in it lips seemed to be locked. I was unable to open them. It, it is my heart not speaking to thee, my lord? Yes. Your heart is speaking to me, Juliet, and your spirit. I hear, I know. I have a special love for you, Juliet, because you are so truthful. Oh, this evanescent world. Oh, how I long for wings to soar above these earthly attachments, these vain imaginings. I recall one afternoon having been invited to lunch in Akka with the master and his guests. Excited, I hurried to change my dress. I, I, I wanted to make myself as beautiful as I could. What a nightmare. I chose a, an elaborate brocade dress fastened in the back with many hooks and eyes. Oh, I, I became flustered. My fingers couldn't find the right hooks. Then suddenly I decided I had to have a veil, a, a cream colored one with a border. And I, 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 I could not arrange it becomingly enough. And before I had finished adorning myself, Kushra ran in with an appalling message. The master and the guests were already seated at the table. Well, by the time I reached the dining room, Abdul Baha had risen from his seat and 
was washing his hands in a basin near the window. He asked me to please excuse him that he had to leave. I sat stricken with an awful shame. With great disrespect, I had kept our Lord waiting and all because of my vanity. Well, of course, the rest of the meal was pure agony to me and a great geyser of tears kept rising. It was all I could do not to burst out crying, but soon I was able to excuse myself from the table and return to my, my room. And no sooner had I taken off my miserable finery then Monovar came to me. Our Lord wanted to know how you are. And then, suddenly, he himself was standing in the doorway. He took me by the hand and led me over to a mirror and took my hand in his and gently pressed it against his cheek and said, the believers do not look at the dress, my child. They look at the heart. Then he opened my hand and in it, he placed three shriveled dates that he brought from the luncheon table. There you are, Juliet, some sweet for you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Abdul Baha bade us farewell today. It was death to see that ship disappear from the New York Harbor. Oh Lord, I begged him. How can we be with thee always? He looked at me with those eyes full of light, that soothing balm, and said, we must simply love one another, Juliet. The more you love one another, the closer you get to me. I go away from this world, but love stays always. And attachment to the lantern is not loving the light. May my diary preserve these rare and precious days. They are simply words, but what more can we mere mortals do to express such longing? Not else save sharing our experiences, surely. Sharing the glow of the celestial radiance. The flow of a pen, the stroke of a paintbrush, moments of eloquence where the voice cries out in certitude, the, the voice cries out in pain. Speaking of the warmth of reunion, the chill of separation, urging us that faith is the balance. Faith is the only thing that can save us from melting down or flying away. We, angels of fire and snow. <laughs>